Hi everybody, it's Neil from Flames Pyro Art Tutorials for Beginners and um, I just wanted to revisit the dog's nose uh, tutorial that started in the last video Now I did mention in that video that as you progress with your dog's face your perception of the nose will change so on the first video the nose looked quite different as I've been adding more depth to the muzzle my perception of the nose completely changed how I wanted it to look so I've added much more to the side, the underneath. As you start building these layers out from the face, all your vision starts to change on how you want the piece to look. So the base coated it of the nose in the last lesson now looks completely different as we start layering up the creases and folds in the dog's fur I've started lining in the edges I just thought this was quite a crucial point and a good piece of learning for myself as well as everybody else that as you progress with your artwork your perception of what you've done before can completely change and then you find you need to make many alterations. And the nose in the last video was quite flat, still really, and everything. I couldn't see the shape I was trying to bring out from as I'm creating more. Of the shading now of the depth of the front I can see that the no the nose needs to change so I'll just keep working at it for a bit in quiet and we'll see what happens as I make these alterations okay so I'll just I'll just work quietly for a few minutes and let's see how things look different as I do them Excuse my stomach, grumbling.
obviously this is a quite a crucial stage where you're trying to bring more layers of depth to your artwork. I'm using the medium speed space shader and I've got it set at level two. So I'm working very lightly just with the tip of the pen trying to find the right look that I'm after and as I keep adding more little bits to the piece can see where I need to make corrections and alterations and darken things and add little areas here and there. So I just thought it was quite a valuable insight as we experiment with this French Bulldog. wasn't going to do a lesson on it today I was just going to time lapse um, all of today's burning but as I started building up the layers I noticed my own perception of the portrait changing I'm trying to build the layers up to this nose at the front. This started out just as an experiment piece and I've been working at it. The dogs all thinking the door's going because I've just knocked. I've just banged the table down, the dogs have thought the door was going. All I'm doing at this stage is just dabbing at this front of the muzzle. Still looking to capture that final depth, that final look. All this is going to go much darker yet. As we build the creases, I have to turn the board round. So as I'm working lightly with my heat. I have to go over the areas many more times. You know, just touching here and there. So that's got to be his break off point. I 
with this muzzle. I want these side creases. To have more depth to them, so we have to keep working them. Just with a pen tip. So we keep trying to capture the depth and we are slowly building some layers up Stomach growling. Oh, you're all enjoying your pyrography wherever you are in the world at the minute. I said I'm really enjoying this experiment with this French bulldog. note to share with you some of the things I learn as I go along and we can look at them together and with all dogs they have pictures just gone off they have spots where the whiskers will come out we're going to try and put them in later with a Dremel tool. But usually where your whiskers are, you have dots. A little like dimples that go in on the muzzle as it as it moves up to the nose. to me won't show up. Round the mouth there's always this dark always dark fur coming out from the nose and around the mouth area well on, on darkest coloured dogs anyway even when you're doing the white dog you would add shading to this area to give depth But 
is more spe speckly fur so you, I'm just dabbing and dotting and just working gently If I really zoom in on my reference picture, you can see every little detail of the nose if you if you wanted to go that far with your detailing. And I'm not going to take it that far and put every little bit of detail in. But you can really zoom in if you use a micro skew. You could actually put all the rid you could put all the ridges, all the little I don't know what you call them, like there's all like wrinkles, isn't there, on the on all the bits of the nose. I'm just going to have to work with my stomach making the noise and I could see that this area in the middle was nowhere near dark enough and thin enough And my whole perception of the nose completely changed. really zoomed in on his nose at the minute because it's really good quality photo off Shutterstock which I've got a subscription to If you, if you were just working off a reference photo, I mean, we did start out at the very beginning with that, and we changed it into a bit of a different looking dog. We've got more work to do on his head up here, and more work on the ears. But just as it came to this crucial point. And I saw the nose completely differently. Thought it'd be good for us to do a little tutorial on it and look at it together. You can see this side of the nose isn't quite shaped right. Luckily, because Noah's is a black, you can slightly change the shape of them at any time. Now, 
milk for it, you can see that straight. Again, it's like building a jigsaw. The good thing with having your reference picture on a tablet is you can zoom in. And if you've got a, a good quality reference photo, that makes a world of difference. You may get some people ask you to do a portrait of a dog for them whatever and the reference pictures will be awful you won't be able to see any detail and then you do get others where you just get a brilliant reference photo with someone who's took it on a good camera phone or whatever Just right on this is on the bridge. All this area has to be his bridge, the final bridge of his nose. This point we're trying to build the depth in from the outside in so I'm just using the edge of the pen just spotting really with my burns just just dabbing And all the fur that goes this way. On this top lip. Has to be shaded out to the right shape that you're trying to capture. You can see with this one, I've got. get a bit of heat even having your pen set on number two on the optimum you can still get a very dark burn if you use the tip
picture and just looking back into it the reference. Turn it, turn it round when you need to. It just gives you that extra control and feel like you're moving in the right direction instead of fighting with it. Having your pen going the wrong way, just turn your board round. And sometimes even from underneath you'll get a completely different view again of what you're working on you'll be able to see things even greater detail when you turn it upside down I said to you on the first lesson, which I'm still sticking by, is I always leave some of the nose sort of really light. capture the highlights as you'll notice on your pictures on the nose there's shimmers of light that casts off the black nose You don't want to waste the opportunity to show them by burning the nose just totally black. see this crease comes a lot further down going very lightly with a tip I mean I could have used a micro skew for this part if I really wanted to go into really fine detail But you'll see as you work on your pieces that you can actually add layers onto the wood and the wife she she doesn't do pyrography and so she doesn't understand that say to it's exactly the same as graphite drawing or whatever you you can still build layers Well, we're using is a heat pencil instead of a graphite pencil.
piece of the wing now is to need more definition. Which we'll get the micro skew out in a minute. That there the pat uh, optima made. I'll just get it out now and put it on the other pen. I've got the Optima Jewel burner. This is the micro skew. If I can show you on the camera. Very fine detailed. Switch the heat over to the other pen. Let's have a look with this. With this you can get the other lines in a little better. More like using a blade. Use this micro skew. But you can do really fine detail with it. On the horse that I was doing as a practice piece, Acrobana could do the braids of the strands on the the ropes on the braids of the horse you could even put the individual strands of hair of rope or twine or whatever with this skew you know pat optimus said to me said it's not just peter child that can make Small tips, jokingly, because he jokes about how small the Peter Child uh, tips are. Which I said, I have got a Peter Child machine. And I'm sure all you Peter Child users out there. You may be watching this will understand where I'm coming from and say the tips are very small they're great for when you're doing detail aren't they takes so much longer with the tiny spoon shader that you get with it and everything with the optimum there's so many he's got so many pen tips that all give different effects If you 
get to the stage where you want to progress with your art and maybe using you know one of these starter mods which I used like I said I used one for a while and used to have to wrap my fingers up with leather because it burnt them but if you get to the stage that you really get into your pyrography and you want to advance to a, a more serious level and you're looking to upgrade your machine then you can't really go far wrong with the Optima so pack with carver tools it won't just sell you any old thing it, it spends the time to find out what you what subjects you like to burn how you burn and stuff to give you tell you the right pens to start with and then you can branch out with more pens as you go I don't know how many pens he has got on the market I mean I've got 12 and I know there are more He's always creating new ones. Hopefully my head's not been in the way on the camera. It's, it's these side ridges that just aren't right yet hopefully with this micro skew we can get them looking a bit better sideways a bit because there's two sides isn't there to this part from those it's got the inside and the outside piece and it like folds around doesn't it So if you want to do, try and look to capture that fault, that turn, you have to spend a bit of time. If it looks on camera, if I'm actually doing much, but it's just ever so fine detail. You can get into them areas that you couldn't before. I'll turn this nose round again because I want to try and capture the underneath. that part
comes out of the, the nose. We're working on the opposite side to this one. So you're trying to show the shade from the other side. And if you do the shades on the two sides, you will slowly build a ridge in the middle. Now I'll zoom this video in close here so you can see the adjustments that have been made. Glint of light that bounces off this piece, this stem. And underneath it is darker. stuff that come out dark patch that runs out from underneath is in there that is like a sort of a funnel coming out coming from the deep recess out something The only thing with these micro skews is they're quite sharp. Which you have to try and be really gentle with it, otherwise you'll cut into the wood quite easily. I found it's got quite a sharp edge to it. still wrong isn't it so 
keep turning your board when you need to. I almost had like squiggles and stuff. If you super zoom into a nose. Take these darker. So just a touch. Did say we weren't gonna go into super fine detail, didn't we, in this nose, and then we've ended up zooming right in. So just go wherever your art takes you. There's no right way or wrong way. There's your way. Your perception. Everybody's perception is completely different. to almost look as if we turn it upside down again. And there's the nose coming along. We'll go back now to um, a time lapse video. 
I just wanted to broach that subject that as we progress with a piece of art, as we're building in the layers, we can start seeing things differently. And because we set off on a lighter heat, when we set out on the burn, we can make the adjustments, you know, as and when required. Whereas if we started off really dark, you've got no room for manoeuvre. That's why I always advise turn your heat down. Proper pyrography isn't about burning everything to a crisp. You know, it's about little subtle changes in value and lines here and there. but just do what comes, whatever you're feeling at the time and whatever your mind is perceiving, just go with it. And there's the nose looking a little better. Still got a bit of a way to go. We'll call this one nose lesson number two. Okay, so I'll leave it there and I'll go back to the time lapse and I'll put all the time lapse video of all the burn together at the end. If I go to any more crucial points that I think would be good for people to see, I will live, well, I'll live up, burn them and upload them to the teaching group and if you're looking to improve your skills or learn something new we can learn it together so we hit subscribe or like on the videos just to let me know you're watching them and that they are helping I'll keep producing them okay so happy burning everybody take care stay safe and I'll speak with you all again soon okay bye for now